Hey, welcome to CNET's Cracking Open. I'm Jason Heiner with Bill Detweiler. Today we're here to crack open the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, one of the most anticipated high-end Android devices of the year. This device looks a lot like last year's Note 8 on the outside, but it has a lot of upgrades to the inside, including the processor, the battery, and much more. It also has the Bluetooth S Pen, yep. which acts like a remote control and has a number of interesting features. And of course, it was the first Android phone to get Fortnite. So Bill, uh, tell us a little bit more about why we're so excited to crack this one open. Yeah, so we're really excited about this one because of all the hardware advancements. It'll be really nice to see the new Qualcomm 845 processor. Yes. It'll also be really cool to see the higher capacity battery. You know, it's got this uh, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. It's like a 15 watt hour battery. I'd like to see just how large that is compared to previous versions. Also, I've always been impressed with Samsung's engineering. Now, the Note 7, sort of notwithstanding the battery issues there, but I've been cracking open Samsung devices for over a decade. And inside the devices, they're usually easy to take apart. They use standard size Phillips screws most of the time. And so we're expecting this to kind of be a pleasure to take apart. So just really excited to get started. Excellent. So what are we going to do to crack this one open? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use a heat gun. Now, the big any, guns. That's right. Uh, this uh, one allows me to control the heat and control the speed of the fan. Now you have to be careful with this. These will get very hot. You know, these are designed to remove paint. Oh yeah. Um, so you have to make sure that you have it set low enough that we do not melt the plastic and that we don't damage, you know, and we don't damage the internal components either. So, you know, with that, uh, let's go ahead, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the SIM card or the SIM card holder. And then we're gonna go ahead, turn our heat gun on, and I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't get too hot uh, so that we don't melt the plastic or damage the internal components. Now, as I heat this up, if you've ever watched our cracking open videos, you'll notice that I don't usually wear an anti-static uh, or ESD wrist strap. Um, and you know, generally that's a good thing that you want to do since we're not necessarily concerned as much about damaging the internal components and I'm super careful uh, about touching metal inside the device or touching the contacts. Uh, and I use ESD safe tools most of the time when I'm doing the delicate work on the circuit boards. I don't usually wear one. I would highly recommend that you do if you were working on someone else's hardware or even your own. While we're heating the uh, back of this up, we're also going to apply a suction cup here that will help us pull up on the back cover and maybe make it a little easier for us to get a one of our thin prying tools inside the device. We want to be very, very careful as we work our way around the edge of the back cover. There will be a thin cable that connects the fingerprint sensor on the back panel to the circuit board, and we don't want to damage that. And that's what happens if you put a little bit too much pressure on these. You manage to crack the back cover. <sighs> a 
Luckily, when this happens, it won't affect the functioning of the phone on the internals, and we'll be able to order a back cover replacement and put it on there. But it sometimes happens. One of the things that's changed over the years is that as the devices have gotten increasingly more resistant to dust and to water, uh, they've also gotten increasingly more difficult to actually take apart. And we can lift it off like that. And it looks like actually the, this is the cable that I wanted to try not to break. This is the fingerprint uh, sensor here. So, so Bill, uh, we're back and I see that we've got a first casualty of our early cracking open here. Uh, what, what happened on the, the yeah, outside? You know, we always try to take these devices apart uh, and do it in a way that lets us put it back together again. In working I can count on order. one hand the yeah, number of times you've broken that we've something. We've actually broken something beyond repair. Yes. Um, so uh, in my haste to try to get the back off, especially when we're doing it uh, on camera, I applied a little bit too much force and we cracked the back panel. Now, th this won't affect the functioning of the phone. It won't yeah. affect even the fingerprint sensor, which is attached to the back of that panel okay. there. But still, it's a cosmetic issue. It could be a safety issue. So we'll order uh, a new back panel from Samsung. We'll put it on the phone and you'll never uh, be the wiser. Very good. So what are you going to do next uh, with the device? Yeah, so what we're really interested in seeing inside the device, we talked about the battery, we talked about the logic board, which will be behind here. Um, and what, what I always enjoy about taking apart Samsung devices is they're pretty easy to take apart once you get inside. These are standard Phillips uh, either double zero or triple zero screws, so it shouldn't be a problem to remove those. We will have to be mindful again of the adhesive that's holding on, like these are the uh, NFC or the charging cord coils yeah. here, I suspect, on the back, so we'll have to be careful not to uh, damage those. And then you'll have a speaker in your port assembly uh, down at the bottom uh, that we'll want to make sure to take out very carefully as well. Very good. All, All right. right. Let's keep going here. All right. Sweet. So now that we're inside the phone, we can see a, a better picture of the layout. We can see the system board here along the side uh, and here at the top. We can see the cameras and we can see the entire battery. We can also see the sleeve for the S pin here. We're going to have to, it looks like there's a few more screws uh, and several uh, connectors that we'll need to detach before we can go any further. And whenever I'm doing this, I always like to make sure that we detach as soon as I can, the battery. Uh, that'll prevent power from fl flowing through the circuits and make things a little safer to disconnect. Sometimes when you do detach uh, the connectors, you can actually remove the components. This is the eight uh, megapixel, I believe, uh, front-facing camera. Now, I think what we can do is with all the cables uh, disconnected, we're actually going to, and all the screws removed, we're actually going to go ahead and remove the circuit board without removing the battery first. The battery is going to be glued uh, to the body here. And so I'm going to leave that in if I can. You have to be very gentle when you lift this out, not to tear any of the cables. And there we go. The remaining components we're going to try and remove are the three and a half millimeter headphone jack and then the USB port at the bottom. There's the USB port. And then here is the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, Jason's favorite part. 
Turning our attention to the main system board, we're gonna go ahead and remove the uh, camera assembly uh, from the back here. All right, so Bill, you've got the Galaxy Note 9 apart. Tell us what we're looking at. Yeah, so this was a challenging teardown to get inside, but once okay. we were inside, it's fairly typical of these devices. You know, on the body, we left some of the components still attached because they're 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 glued to the to the body, and I didn't want to damage them removing them. We yeah. left the vibration motor, we left the battery, and then we left the front facing speaker also attached to the body there. One of the things that's really interesting, the heat pipe uh, here that's beside the battery is bigger than we have seen on previous phones and maybe a nod to the more powerful processor. Uh -huh. Speaking of the processors, we unfortunately can't see them. Okay. You know, on the main system board, the metal shields that cover the chips are soldered to the board. I don't want to remove those because doing so will likely damage the boards beyond repair. We do want to put these back together. Now, we do know because of the specs that Samsung has published that it either has 8 gigs or 6 gigs of RAM. It either has 128 or 512 gigs of storage. Um, and of course, we know it has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 processor hidden under here too. Uh, we can also see uh, the pair of 12 megapixel cameras. There's the eight megapixel front camera. We have the USB-C connector here, your favorite, the three and a half inch headphone jack. And then we have the speaker assembly uh, here, there and then have. the uh, NFC, uh, the charging coils yep. here. So even without, taking the shields off the circuit or the main circuit board, we still have a good sense of what's inside the device. And the very cool thing is with that upgraded top end version that has 512 gigs of storage, you can also then add, it has the expandable storage, you can add the 512 gig SD card and this becomes the first terabyte um, storage phone. Indeed, yeah. And of course, the first Android phone with Fortnite. All right, that's it for the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. If you have other devices you'd like to see us crack open, please let us know. Post in the comments on CNET or on YouTube, and we will be happy to take a look. We're always looking for good stuff that we can crack open, learn from, and share it with you. So that's it for Bill Detweiler. I'm Jason Heiner. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.